What's going on? Rob Fish here in the Bike Bandit Garage. People buy from us because we're the largest power sports store on the web. And we cater to all sorts of customers and their machines. Street bikes, cruisers, dirt bikes, dual sports, ATVs, UTVs, and even watercraft. But another huge segment that we cater to is the scooter crowd. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at scooters, the commonalities and the differences compared to motorcycles, aspects of ownership, and then a quick breakdown of common maintenance items that scooters need. So stay tuned. So maybe you're new to the scooter scene, or perhaps you're an old hat, having ridden tens of thousands of miles on them. There's no doubt that scooters are here to stay and are becoming more and more popular every day. There are many reasons that people look into scooter ownership and folks are drawn to the idea of owning a scooter for many reasons. Some look at the financial aspect and can appreciate the low initial cost of purchasing a scooter combined with their low rates on insurance and registration. Others look at the fuel savings as most scooters get upwards of 60 miles per gallon and some are in the ballpark of even 100 miles per gallon. And with gasoline at 350, even four bucks a gallon, it's pretty enticing for sure. Others might live in the city and the ease of parking makes scooter ownership ideal. Oftentimes, those that live in downtown areas don't even have a garage or a designated parking space. Just another reason that owning a scooter makes sense. They're easy to ride and even easier to park. Maybe you're thinking, then why not just buy a motorcycle instead of a scooter? There are many reasons that some folks opt for owning a scooter compared to a traditional motorcycle. First, there's the actual cost factor. The average new scooter runs two, three thousand bucks average, whereas the average motorcycle runs closer to six to nine thousand bucks, so two to three times the initial cost just to get started. Another cost aspect is routine maintenance. As an easy comparison, let's talk about the average set of scooter tires, right about 50 bucks. The average set of motorcycle tires, though, that's about 250 bucks. Then there's the fact that with smaller scooters, in some states you don't even need to have a designated license. Here in California, for instance, scooter riders can obtain an M2 license only, whereas a motorcycle rider must obtain a full M1 endorsement. Ladies enjoy scooters as they can wear skirts or dresses because scooters are designed in a step-through manner. And motorcycles, you must actually straddle the machine itself. Scooters are also much lighter than motorcycles, and thus maneuvering them is also much easier, especially in tight urban areas. And another huge factor for many is the fact that scooters have a CVT transmission. Just twist and go. No shifting needed. So, you're a scooter owner. Maybe it's one that you just purchased new, or maybe you just bought a used one, or it's one that you've owned for a while. But just like motorcycles, scooters need to be maintained with routine service. In a moment, we'll take a look at the more common items that need taking care of. But first, there's one very important item to consider. One thing that all owners of any vehicle should have is an owner's manual. Inside, you'll find service intervals, recommended fluids, and torque values. Every scooter is different, and so the below information are just general guidelines. Again, check the manual for your specific model, and if you don't have one, you can easily order a service manual from us by clicking the link below. Once you have that, you're really ready to get started. Today, we're going to use this here 2007 Yamaha Vino 125 as an example. We're going to talk about eight areas of maintenance. Engine oil, transmission oil, tires, the battery, spark plugs, air filters, brakes, and the drive belt. I'll give you the intervals that Yamaha recommends, and then I'll tell you when I personally perform the services and why I've differed, if at all. So let's dive in. First off, engine oil. Yamaha says to change the engine oil initially at 800 miles or one month. This I followed. Sometimes changing the oil too soon can actually be harmful, as the piston rings won't seat properly if the oil is too clean and too fresh. Sounds crazy, but it's the truth. From there, Yamaha says to change the oil every 4,000 miles. I personally cut that in half, and I do it every 2,000 miles. This scooter's a 125, and I ride it pretty much wide open all the time. The quantity is relatively small at only one quart. A quart of quality oil is cheap insurance. Yamaha recommends to change the oil filter and the oil strainer every 4,000 miles as well. This I do. So basically, I do the filter and the strainer every other oil change. Pretty easy. When it comes to the final transmission oil, Yamaha offers up the same intervals. 800 miles for the initial service, and then about every 4,000 miles. Here I'm a little cautious. And why do I do it every 1,000 miles? Because the reservoir only holds 0.14 quarts, so about 4.5 ounces of oil. 
I can buy a quart of gear oil for about 12 bucks a quart, and I can get about seven changes from one bottle. Again, to me, that's just cheap insurance. And the change takes only about five minutes, and the longest part is actually waiting for the old fluid to actually drain out. Let's talk tires for a moment. Tire replacement will depend on wear for sure, and you can actually see the wear progress. What you can't see is tire pressure, and so that should be checked weekly, as it will drastically affect tire wear, and more importantly, how the scooter behaves to steering inputs as well as braking performance. When I got this scooter, it had barely been ridden, sat for years. The tires were in fine condition, but I did, for safety's sake, replace the valve stems. A couple of things just needed to be replaced right off the bat. The battery was dead. And since the battery sits in the floorboard, keeping the weight low and centered, and I'm not looking for performance, I just went with a regular lead-acid battery as opposed to one of the super lightweight lithium iron versions by Shirai or Ballistic. Average battery life is about three years. I replaced the spark plug too. Again, cost was minimal, about five bucks. Yamaha says to check it, clean it off, and regap it about every 2,000 miles. But as often and as far as I ride the scooter, I figured I'd just swap it out as it's relatively easy to access and the swap is simple. And that way, I wouldn't need to touch it for a long time. The air filter was about the same. It cost me 13 bucks and I just swapped it out. Yamaha says to clean it every six months or 2,000 miles and replace it every year or 4,000 miles. Easy change. This Vino 125 came with a disc front brake system and a drum in the rear. Yamaha says to simply check the pads and shoes every six months and replace when worn out. Now, the fluid in the front is actually dot four and should be swapped every two years. For more information about why changing your brake fluid really is so important, check out our crash course on brake fluid right here. Most motorcycles are chain driven, but of course there are models that are either shaft driven or belt driven. Scooters run what is called a CVT, where not only are they automatic, they're a single gear too. Perhaps you've heard the term twist and go when it comes to scooters. Scooters deliver their power from the engine to the drive wheel via a belt. And this belt will wear out over time. It actually gets thinner side to side, and an easy way to know it's time for a change will be the loss of actual top end speed. Yamaha says to swap the belt out every 12,000 miles. Now here's something that most people don't know. The drive belt on most scooters have their own air filter. So just like the engine's air filter, clean it every six months or 2,000 miles, and replace it every year or 4,000 miles. Will you save money by buying a scooter instead of a motorcycle? There are so many variables that only you know best if a scooter is right for you. The type of scooter, the terrain, your local climate, your distance to work, your budget, and plenty of other factors come into play. Scooters are a great time indeed, and their maintenance regimen is very similar to a motorcycle, but there's one thing that I know for sure. Please, wear the right gear. Oftentimes people think, oh, it's just a scooter. But even the smallest scooter on the market today will still top 35 miles per hour, and 35 miles per hour sliding across the asphalt will hurt no matter what you're riding. So please, dress for the occasion. So there you have it, just a quick video on scooters. We hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something today here in the Bike Bandit Garage. If you like, feel free to leave comments below with tricks or tips for other scooter owners or for those that may be in the market for one. Here we also put a couple links to some of the products that we discussed in this video. And remember, if this is your first time here in the Bike Bandit Garage, do yourself a favor. Hit the red button and subscribe to our channel. In each new episode, we'll bring you another video keeping you in the loop with all things power sports. Until next time, thanks again for joining me. Now, it's time to go ride.